open the conference, we have a keynote from the esteemed speaker, Coyote DeMille. Coyote has been named in the top 10 of the top 100 most powerful young entrepreneurs in the world. He graduated with a high first class in BSc Honours Psychology of Sport and Exercise, achieving some of the highest presentation marks his university has ever seen. This is despite barely scraping into university through the clearing process three years prior. Coyote was later elected Vice President and Governor of his university and on a national scale. He, uh, he was elected a Director of the National Union of Students. Now working as a full-time entrepreneur, Coyote loves speaking with students, sharing with them his successes to inspire them to be successful too. With regular appearances in the media, you may recognise Coyote from BBC Breakfast, BBC News and BBC Radio 5 Live, where he has famously been described as the smoothest talker on TV. Can't wait. It gives me great pleasure to invite Coyote to deliver his keynote, Success and Higher Education, What's the Connection? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that brilliant introduction, Nikki. Okay, first, raise your hand if you're a current student or a member of staff at Newcastle College by show of hands. Thank you. Now, also raise your hand if you like the idea of becoming extremely successful by show of hands. And say, I. I said, say, I. Thank you. I saw the hand up as well. I saw it just a little, little flip. So, you know, I'm beginning, I fell in love with this college immediately this morning. As soon as I came onto your campus, like, they gave me a map. I was like, wow, I've got a map for a campus, this is amazing. I mean, your college is bigger than my whole university. You know what I'm saying? And I also love the fact that you have a combination of both FE as well as HE. I think mean, that's a very interesting mix that you have both FE students and HE. You see, my college in South London, we were just an FE. But then the attendance was so low, it was just like an F. The E was just, <laughs> e was just somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? We just basically had F. So I'm very curious, and before we continue, I want to know roughly, because I'm trying to look around the room, I'm trying to figure out where everybody is. So I want to know what is our demographic, I want to know what FE students we have here, what HE students, etc. So if you're an FE student, when I say FE make noise, I want you to make noise, just go absolutely sick. <laughs> hey, can I say HE do the same? Just to see where we are, see who's, going to see who's the loudest really. Are you ready? FE make some noise! <laughs> oh, no, no FEs! No FEs? No? Are we in the choir? Okay. Any HE? Okay. FE? FEs are shy, you know. You know what? I don't, I don't blame you. In college, I'll shy too. HE, make some noise. In fact, staff, staff, make some noise if you're a member of staff. There you go. Hey, staff for the winners. Give a round of applause to the members of staff. Interesting. Okay, so the kind of demographic we have there, so I can kind of tailor my speech to our audience. So we have a majority with HE, I'll take it with staff two. Now, okay. Okay, one second. By the way, who's on Snapchat? Anybody on Snapchat? Can I show you on Snapchat? Okay, sweet, because here's what I've done for you. Uh, okay, anyone's on Snapchat? I've created a filter just for us today. Now, in addition to speaking, I also do spoken word. Now, being from South London, I guess, it's very common for people to have to do rap or rhyme. Anyone heard of rap or rhyme before? You know, Stormzy, South London. But you see, for me, when I was younger, I could never really, I could never catch a drop, I could never catch the beat. I'd be like, get ready, get ready, get ready, and then, ah, oh, just missed the drop. <laughs> so for me, I kind of opted to do more spoken word or like poetry. If you're not too taught spoken word, it's almost like poetry. And what I did is that earlier, in fact, earlier this week, I released my first debut spoken word mixtape for success. Earlier this week. And so what I realised is that, right, I want to create a feel. I love creating Snapchat feels. Now, for me, I'm a huge fan of Snapchat. I don't know if any of you are. But I know that Facebook's now introduced Facebook stories. Who's seen it? The Facebook stories. No one's seen it? You know what I'm saying? But for me, I'm, I'm very biased towards Snapchat. So I've got, I've got some Snapchat feel up. So, but because I kind of created a debut mixtape this week for success, for spoken word, I decided to combine the two. So this is what's going to happen. I want to give one of you a free copy to win this spoken word mixtape. All you have to do is take your best pick or video with this filter. Here, 
So that could be something that you've learned. It'd be very interesting for me to hear what you've learned, or just be that, that great selfie. I know some of these girls over here have got a deeper selfie, right? You can just do a nice selfie or whatever. Tweet it to me at Harry Decord with the hashtag KAD so I can search for it. And when I'll give you a free copy of this mixing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So anyone who's got Snapchat, you can do that. Also, do you have any birthdays? Any birthdays? Any birthdays this week? No? Okay, no, no one born on the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st? Okay, no problem. That's okay. The reason I always like to give people an opportunity for birthdays to celebrate is because when I was 14 years old, I'll never ever forget. I was four, you know it's like being 14, yeah? I woke up excited, probably like 8 o'clock before I went to school, went into my mum's bedroom. It's like, morning, mum. She's like, all right, Kai. I was like, morning, mum. She's like, all right, Kai, get ready to go for school. I'm like, mum, it's an important day today. She goes, yes, yeah, Monday, go to school. Yeah, so my mum forgot my birthday. So it's now for me, anyone who'd birthdays, I'd like to give them an extra recognition for it. But um, since there's been no birthdays this week, that's fine, we can skip this slide. But it's actually my birthday on Monday too, actually. So I turned the big 2-5 on Monday. <laughs> I guess, you know what, so I forgot we've got a large number of members of staff in. I guess for staff, 25 isn't that old, but compared to, <laughs> compared to the students, I guess the majority of you are anywhere between the age of 16 to 20. So, um, so yeah. Now, when I go to conferences and events, ever since I left education, I've always liked to continue to go to conferences and events such as one you're here at right now. Because I believe that in order to become successful in life, it's important to keep working on yourself, it's important to keep learning, it's important to keep growing. Now, typically, when you leave education, either from college or university, you tend to stop growing on yourself, you tend to slow down a bit in terms of your self-development. So for me, since in 2013 when I graduated, I made a commitment to myself to continue learning and to continue to grow and continue developing. Now, for us today, I just want to share with you three things. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about myself, you know, who I am, no big deal, just tell you a little bit about myself. I want to share you what allowed me to become successful from where I went to university to now. I also want to give you some tangible assets, some, some tangible things you can go away with and take away right now. Because there's nothing worse than going to a conference or going to an event and it's like there's nothing applicable, there's nothing you can act on right now. So going back to what I said about me going to conferences, I became now very notorious in a good way when I attend conferences and events because of the way I am when I'm in the audience such as yourselves. And through me going through conferences and events, I've now, I've made a lot of partners and made a lot of friendships and a lot of relationships with people just the way I am at events. So because I want to share with you some tangible assets and some tangible things you can go away with right now, I want to share with you one of my biggest secrets when I do attend conferences and events. So here's a picture of me and my mum at an event. Okay, I'm going to have to do that again. That wasn't the reaction I wanted. Listen, when I show, <laughs> when I show the picture of mum, you're supposed to say, ah, oh, okay? We're going to do that again, okay? Or in fact, you can even give me a couple of heart claps, you get what I'm saying? Like, ah, oh. all right? Okay, so guys, it's, it's a picture of my mum, all right? So when I'm showing you a picture of my mum, you have to say, oh, all right, so that makes sense, right? It was Mother's Day a couple of, come on, people. It was Mother's Day, all right. Let's rewrite, 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 rewrite. Yes, yeah, so I go to conferences and events, I make nice partnerships on pieces of tangible assets. Here's a picture of me and my mum at a conference. Aww. Thank you. So here's a picture of me and my mum. And in fact, if anyone can tell, do you guys want to come in and sit down? Or? Yeah, is any, any, if there's any space on the table, can we really show, show a hand so they can sit down? You know what, I used to have a forfeit when people are late, you know, should I give them a forfeit? <laughs> yes or no, quick, yes or no. Yeah. Okay, guys, come back to the front, guys, come back to the front. Go, 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 try it, okay. Now, whenever I'm doing a conference or an event, but don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you, you know what I'm saying? My mum's on the screen right now, so I can't hurt you. It's like my mum's watching me right now. Okay, so whenever I'm talking at a conference or an event, it can be very distracting sometimes when people come in late. I'm sure some of your lecturers or teachers can relate. You know, your mid flow. And someone comes in late, it's like, oh, what was I talking about again? Oh, look, there's a butterfly. You know what I'm saying? You can't get distracted. So what I'd like to do now, for anyone who comes in late, I'd like to give them a forfeit. It's, it's almost like a five fit. That's how funny it is. <laughs> we'll put it onto that. Okay, so the forfeit, what I'd like to do is that for everybody who comes in late, they have to do jumping jacks or star jumps. <laughs> 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 He's thinking that already. Listen, next time you're going to be early. Next time you're going to be early. So... For the first group of people coming late, that's just going to be one jumping jack or one star jump, then two, etc. So, what I'm going to ask you to do with the audience, is that right? If they can do one jumping jack, yes or no? Yeah. Okay, so everyone, just give me one, it's just one. Three, two, 
at least one of three categories. How many categories? <coughs> yeah, at least one of three categories. You're either A, you're either an early bird, meaning that you got here, not at nine o'clock, you got here at like 8.30, you know, you're helping sit out of the room. Or if you're not an early bird, you tend to be a night owl. You know, some of us might be night owls. But some of us are neither early birds or night owls. Some of us are just permanently exhausted pigeons. You know, raise your hand if you're just a permanently exhausted pigeon. That's okay to admit it. You see, all the students, you know, we're just permanently exhausted pigeons. You know, so, you know, shouts out to you guys for actually getting here early. I'll just take a sip of my water. Yeah, so, yeah, so shouts out to all of you for coming here on time. But as I was saying, I'm going to quickly backtrack a bit for the guys who just came in. So I was saying that when I like to go to conferences and events, I like to, there's a way I'm in a crowd which allows me to, be, you know, again, it helps me to be successful, it helps me to, to get to where I am today. So what I like to do is that it's the way I take my notes. Now, you're at a conference, so I'd like to think that you should be taking notes in some way, shape, or form. Now, typically, it's a pen and paper. If you haven't got pen or paper, you might want to borrow it from your friend. But I like to take notes on my phone, and here's how I do it. Some of you might think, that, why has he got takeaways on there? Why has he got questions? Now, this is, so this is a massive tip I want to share with you straight away, because this can help you. Not just at this conference, but just help you in life when you go to any conferences. So for me, above, can you see the, I don't know if you can see the laser pen. But above that, I would have all the notes, just what I'm taking, 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 taking. But at the very bottom, I would have this bit, takeaways. You like my takeaways, right? There's fries. McDonald's endorsed, endorsed me to do this. <laughs> and so I have my takeaways. So now these are my aha moments. The aha. So if I hear anything and it's just like an aha, I, I write it down. So these are my big takeaways. So then when I go home, I don't have to go through all my notes. I just go to my aha. What are they called? Aha. My aha. So these are your aha, so your takeaways. So it's very easy to go over your notes, so I, I recommend, I strongly recommend you to do that. And then the final bit I look to is uh, above all my notes is questions. Because when you have a keynote speaker or someone speaking at an event, it's very likely that as you're sitting down, you have a lot of questions that you want to ask them. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm a big celebrity or anything like that, but when you're going to a big event, you might only have that split second to ask the speaker a question. Now, typically you might be in a bathroom or in a lift or an elevator, etc. And you don't have, it's like, oh my God, there's that person. What do I want to ask them again? I forgot. But the way I take my notes, I just go on my phone and I'll be like, cool, I need to ask you this, 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 and this. And bang, I have all my questions. So when I meet someone, it's like, bang, 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 all my questions out. So that's something I really recommend. So if you're not asking me any questions, you have them all written down, or if you have any other speakers. That's just a big tip that I want to share with you. Now, who considers themselves to be a good or a decent human being by show of hands? Someone giggled, you know, they're not too sure, you know, they think I'm a good person, but they remember what they did last summer. <laughs> you know, so, you know, we all, we all consider ourselves to be good people, hence why you're at the HQ conference today. But as people, we can't help to be subjective. We can't help to have opinions against people we meet or come across with. Does that make sense? So, for example, you might see someone at a bus stop and think, you know what, yeah, I don't really like his haircut. You know, it doesn't say we judge people, we can't help do that with human beings, and that's okay. Or you might have came to this conference today and thought, Right, you know what, I'm feeling her dress, you know. Right, where did she get them shoes from? Topshop, right, maybe? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's how we are as people. So I'm guessing then that me standing in front of here, some of you might have made opinions or judgments about me. No? You don't have to admit, but that's what we do as people. Like, I mean, I do it to myself all the time. I wake up in the mirror, look at myself and think, why have I got this ball patch? Yeah, I don't get it. Like, why have I got this ball patch? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you want to judge me, that's cool. I judge myself every day. So it's okay if I spend the next few minutes just telling you a little bit about myself, which gives you, let me actually understand why I'm standing in front of you today. Is that, is that okay to share that with you? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes? Brilliant. Okay then. In fact, before I start, I'm going to say that for a bit later. Just again, I just want to thank you all for being here, simply because, like I said, it's not very easy. In fact, let's, let's do a high five. Let's say the high five. So I love the high five. Turn to the person to your right, give them a massive high five and say that I'm glad you're here. Good, I need to get the energy going. Get the energy going. Get the energy going. Turn to the person to your left and say, I'm glad you're here too. Good, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Are we ready? Yeah. I said, Are we ready? Yeah. Thank you, that's better. 
Because for me, it all started in 1992, somewhere over here, in a hotel car park, in a house <coughs> of my parents, on the corner. I'm joking, that's not how it started. I don't know how it started. And you know what, to be honest, I don't even want to think about how it started. Just know that it started. Okay? So let's fast forward 16 years when I was in year 11, collecting my GCSEs. I woke up in bed, I've got a nice bright blue room, the sun's rays was bursting through my curtains. And I realized, all right, it's time to get up. It was a beautiful summer's day, sometime in August, absolutely beautiful. And as soon as I literally took one step out of bed, my foot touched the floor, my mom come banging on my door. Cody, it's time to get up. I looked to myself, why is my mom so excited? I was like, oh, right, it's she to see day, it's time to collect our results. And guys, you know it's like parents are excited. Yeah, you're not, you your parents are excited, thinking to myself, yo, mom, chill, they're my results, right? You know what I'm saying? They're mine. You did yours, you did O levels, you know what I'm saying? My mom did O levels. <laughs> Again, the teacher laughing, they know it's like they did O level. So I was like, okay, cool. I went downstairs and made myself some Wheatie Bix. I'm a big fan of Wheatie Bix. Anyone like Wheatie Bix? Yeah. yeah, but Wheatie Bix are making it mad complicated. They're making things like coconut Wheatie Bix and raisin Wheatie Bix. I'm from the old school, I just like my basic Wheatie Bix. So I'm tucking into my basic Wheatie Bix right now, turn on the TV, and BBC One, as you get every August, it's the people collecting their results who got like triple A stars, um, I don't know, like a degree from Mars. You know what I'm saying? You got the, you got the elite students on the TV. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, yeah, so what? I'm, the, I'm not really getting that. So I'm just eating my breakfast. Tidy, come, it's time to go get into the car. I was like, all right, mum, I'm coming. She's mad excited. You see, I'm the first born in my family, you see. So for her, I'm her first child actually collecting their GCC results, which means that I'm almost more setting the foundation for my siblings younger than me. So we get in the car and we drive to my secondary school, or high school as you might say up north. Now as we're driving, I'm not really, I, I wanted to be one of the cool kids in, in year 11, so I wasn't really, I didn't want to seem too enthusiastic about getting my grades. I thought, you know, I didn't want to seem, you know, like the neek or the boffin, for example. So no, I know that some people decide to get their results at 9 a.m. I thought I'm going to get their call and arrive at 9.05. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be too cool, I don't want to be too cool, so 9.05, that's kind of cool, right? So I thought I'm going to come at 9.05. So my school gate, is, the building's bright yellow. Like, it wasn't always bright yellow, but it was bright yellow. So this day was just so bright. But I couldn't help but look out the window and start daydreaming six months prior. You see, at that time, it was in May of that year. And we were playing in the last game of the season. Any footballers in here? Any footballers? So it's the last game of the season. It's a very important last game of the season. It was 1-1. It was about like five minutes ago. And we had to win the game. We couldn't draw if we wanted to win the league. Because between the first and the second, it was mad tight. But they got me on a bench. So I'm thinking myself, yo, five minutes ago, at least you're going to give me a run out. So they said, all right, it's 1 1, five minutes ago, we're not going to win the league unless we need a goal. You know what, Kylie, let's just bring you on and let you play. Now, I, I had a kind of fallen out within the team, um, simply because I didn't really get on with the management and I didn't get on with some of the players. So I was kind of like the black sheep in the team. So it was, so it's quite a sad season for me. Well, it's playing at a very good level, it's semi-professional. So everyone is, everyone there is sick, do you know what I'm saying? Where's St. James' Park? Like, give me a trial. You know what I'm saying? So everyone there is good to a certain standard. So they brought me on five minutes ago, cut a long story short, abandoned top, top corner, we won the league thanks to me. So for me, as I'm driving to college, that's all I'm thinking about, because I was a football fanatic. So I'm just thinking about how, how I scored that winning goal, or win the league. Everyone jumped on me, it's absolute madness. My mum shook me, Kylie, wake up. I'm like, right, okay, so I must have fell asleep just daydreaming about me scoring that banging goal. Like, honestly, it was so sick, man. I wish, I wish we had iPhones back then. It would have went, I'm sure it would have went viral, man. You know what I'm saying? It was a banging goal, edge of box. So for me, I'm even, I'm even smiling and thinking about it now, so I did that. So mum says to me, all right, Kylie, are you ready? I said, all right, mum. She said, do you want me to come in with you? I said, no, you're not coming in with me to let my results. Like, you know, I told you, 905, I want to be cool. You know what I'm saying? That take me... Back down, way not being cool. So I ran inside, grabbed the envelope, came back in the car. So I'm there just holding the envelope. And I'm feeling someone glaring at me. I'm feeling eyes. You know, you just feel eyes looking at you. And my mom's like, well? I'm like, well, if you're so enthusiastic, you can open it. So my heart is beating, like, da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. Thinking to myself, wow, what's going to be, what's going to be my GCSEs? Because at that time, you're thinking, and that's everything. You're brought up thinking that GCSEs are everything. I open the envelope, cut long story short, or cut long story medium, as I like to say. I got, what did I get? Two A's, six B's, and one C. So I did okay in my GCSEs. It's not fantastic, but I did okay. But it was enough to get me into college. Now, so I rolled at college, sixth form. Nothing like this, man. Your college, honestly, your college is sick, honestly. 
Honestly, please understand, please appreciate your college. Like, listen, they gave me a map, you know what I'm saying? They gave me a map, but they gave me a map. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate your college. So I enrolled that seat for me. And then this is where my life was good up until then. You know, I lived in a two-parent family. I'm the oldest of four, got younger, got younger siblings. But then when I enrolled into college, that is when things you could say took a turn. Not necessarily nasty turn, but it did take a turn. Because I went to all boys school, right? And when I went to college, there were girls. I was like, bro, what are these people? Like, where did they come from, you know? You know what I'm saying? I thought my mum and sisters were just like me, just with a pretty good looking and with a high pitched voice. So for me, I became very distracted at college, in, not necessarily in a bad way, but I went out a lot. You know what I'm saying? Can anyone think, where's me? Anyone? Any guesses? It's okay, it's okay to be wrong. Any guesses, where's me? There I am. So there's me, hand. I'm going on the hand up, you know, but yeah, I tell you to look like, I had a lot of fun going to college. I was like, I had a lot more freedom. Because you know what it's like in school, you're, you know where you are, nine to three, Monday to Friday, right? That's what it's like. When you go to college, you might only be in tw two times a week, three times a week. So I had a lot of spare time on my hands. Like, you know, and they say, you know, they say like, <coughs> um, devil makes work for idle hands. That's what it almost felt like for me because I had a lot of freedom. College, what, a couple of times a week, and that's where things then just turn a bit wrong for the worse. You see, my mum, my mum, and my parents thought things went bad for me at college. But little did they know that things started to turn a turn for the worse earlier than that, back in March that year. So I, went, I, started, I got my GCSEs in August. Started college in September, but things started taking a turn around March of that year. And let me tell you why. A sixth form open evening at my school. And my school's in partnership with a sixth form with some other local schools in like a consortium. Now, my mum said, oh, do you want me to drop you to the sixth form open evening? I said, Mum, we're trying to be cool, man. Come on, you can't drop me. All my friends are linked up. We're linking up. We're going to go together. So she's cool, no problem. So I linked up all my friends. It's about 7 p.m. It's not dark in the sky, but it's getting into like late evening, so it's getting a bit dusky. I met up with all my friends outside Forage Hill train station. So it's about 10 of us. I was like, yes, it's cool, man. But like, again, I wasn't on a leash when I was younger, but I was kind of under my parents' rules. So when I went there for myself, it was like, it was nice, just 10 of us all going to college. We were going to the seats from my open evening, sorry. And we linked up at the bus stop, and what happened next was really, really surreal to me. And I was very, very naive, actually, what happened. Because what happened is that we were walking, going past this bus stop, and one of my friends broke away from the group and sat next to this next kid at the bus stop. Now, all my other friends started laughing. Apart from me, I was thinking, oh, maybe he knows him from somewhere. I don't know. I was, I was very, like, naive. And then, hmm? It's literally like a split second. It happened so quickly. That kid at the bus stop got up, started running. My friend came back and said, I got a new phone. And I was, and I was like, I don't, how? I was like, how? What, did he owe you a phone? I was very naive to what actually happened. I was like, OK. I didn't think nothing of it. And we continued to go towards the, um, the seat form. We looked around, you know, you can do this A-level, that A-level, that B-tech, looked at our options, and the seat form opened even finished. It's like 9 p.m. and we all came out again. One of my main friends out of the 10 of us said to me, are you rolling? I said, rolling? Like, yeah, what, cartwheel, roly ponies? I haven't done that since I was a kid. Like, yeah, I'm rolling. They said, no, yeah, are you rolling? I said, yeah, I'm rolling, yeah, where are we going? They said, okay, cool, so here's what you need to do. Pull up your hoodie and pull it tight. I was like, okay, maybe to protect my head from the floor. You know what I'm saying? They said, pull up your hoodie, pull it tight. And we walked down the block where we linked up with another 20 guys, all with hoodies on, pulled tight in dark outfits. I was like, wow, there's a lot of us here. Like, imagine this room, imagine if all this stood up rolling. I was like, wow, this, this, is, this, is, this is amazing. Again, I was very naive, I just didn't really, I was very protected, I, was not, I almost grew up in a bubble. They said, okay, cool. We just started walking down the road, 30 guys. Imagine 30 guys rolling through South London. So as I'm walking, I say to my friend, like, who the rest of these guys? And from the 10 of us, from the 10 to 15 of us, we didn't really know that we were 15, and there's a reason why you don't, when you roll in big groups, there's a reason why you don't know everybody in the group. Hence, if you, something happens, you get caught, and the police say, who was that person? You know, I genuinely have no idea. They said, don't worry about them guys, they're with us, but this is our main group here. So I said, okay, cool. So we're walking, and he said, uh, yeah, so we're gonna walk from Forest Hill to Catfield, which is about a two mile walk. I said, why don't we get the bus? He goes, no, we have to walk. 
I said, okay, I mean, we had oyster cars, and you travel with free time, and I didn't really understand. And then he said, okay, Coyote, as we're walking, if anything kicks off, he's got a strap, he's like the baddest man on ends, and he's got your back. So I said, okay, do you know what I mean by strap? He has a, he, I mean, he has, he has, he has a fire on him, basically. So I was like, okay. So we're walking, just walking down, and without going into too much details, I wasn't really involved, but the best way I can describe what happened on that two mile walk, imagine that we're a black hole, and as we're walking, everything just getting sucked into us, everything. Anything and everything. Belonging everything, just everything. Literally, that's the best way to describe it, like a black hole. And as a 16 year old at the time, I'll be honest, I felt very powerful. Like, I felt unbelievable power, like nothing can possibly, who can talk to us, like this is unreal. The sense of power, it's not in a good way, but the sense of power that you have is unreal. When you're rolling 20 man deep, and you know, no one can touch you. So my mum didn't know that happened at the open even for my sixth form, so just before I got into the position where you guys were at. So then that's where the, that's where turn got, that's where the team team took a turn for the worse. Because I don't know if you see with the lighting, but then this is my predicament throughout my first year of college. I liked that sense of power that I had. So when I was at college, this is what it was like. We used to just roll around like this, and here's me. Hoodie pulled tight. I think then I just did it myself. No one told me I get I got the drift. And that's how we used to roll around. So that also was like for me, my first year of college. That kind of lifestyle. That was my main circle there. There's about one, two, I can't even count. Seven of us, and obviously the guy taking the photos. So our main eight, and we'd always link <coughs> up with other people from other areas, whether it's Peckham, Camberwell, Brixton, whatever. So it's no surprise then that in my first year of college is when I caught my first case. November of 2008, I was arrested and charged with a robbery. I'll never forget going into the station the first time. I was actually arrested with my co friend and one of the guys on the phone. We went to, in the station together. And sitting in the cell, I was thinking to myself, it gave me my first realisation that, right, you can go to prison. I never realised that prison was possible. I, I mean, obviously, at the time, obviously I knew that prison, people do go to prison, but I never realised that it was actually physically an option. We actually had friends who also went to prison, but it's like, I never realised that could have been an option for me. And there's nothing worse than calling your parents when you're in trouble. But imagine calling your parents from a police cell. And that was one of the worst things for me. I, I, I think I got checked in about 10 p.m. So my mum's thinking, why isn't he at home? And secondly, why am I getting a call from an unknown number? Firstly, why is there a police saying, is it this person your son needs to speak to you? Now, for anyone young people, there's nothing worse for me than seeing my parents cry. But particularly if I was the cause. <laughs> Oh, the light is not the best, but I skipped that. So for this Mother's Day, could, could I've always had this haunting behind me. So this Mother's Day, I decided I want to write a spoken word piece dedicated for my mum for the turmoil that I put her through, through my early teens. Can I share it with you? Oh, it's very fun. Can I share it with you? Yes. Okay. And this is the screenshot from the video. So it's a letter for me writing to my mum. Dear mum, where do I even start? I remember them times you used to put breadcrumbs in my hand to feed them ducks at Lanewall Park. No longer a little boy, but it still brings me joy to hear you chuckle and laugh. And I was so happy seeing you smile at my graduation, but as you know, it wasn't always elation, because deep down my past had parts that were semi-dark. Mum, I'm sorry you got me locked at the station. Sitting in that cell, I wasn't raised Christian, but I prayed for that bell, my freedom seemed distant. But on a dark night, you was always there to listen. And in court, you still backed it, even though you knew I was active. But don't cry, mum, it wasn't your fault. You never raised a bad kid. But it hurt me that I hurt you. So if you need help now, I'll be the first to. Give you that helping hand, because I understand I'm the type of man to do anything to help the fam. So if you need pee, I'll send it. If something's broken, I'll mend it. I can have a girlfriend, but you still be the woman in my life, I'm contented. Because it's not even Mother's Day, it's Mother's Life. In 92, you gave me mine. So I swear down to the day I die with all my heart, I'll always cry. The words, I love you, Mum. Thank you. But things weren't always that sour for me. Yes, 
full college they were, they did pay for a term for the worst. <laughs> but I did eventually go to university. First year of my A-levels, I completely, I'll be real, I screwed up. Obviously, you know, I've, I, was, I was in trouble more than in, in classes. Remember I said F and E? Like, I was probably that E disappearing. You know, so I did eventually get, get into my A2s, where I did take my A-levels. And people always ask me, like, how, how was you able to turn around from where you were <coughs> over here to where you are now? It's several reasons. Firstly, I'll say that I, I, I had a girlfriend at the time. So in my second year, I had a girlfriend who really helped me go on a straight and narrow. Simply because I remember we, we used to call it moves. We went on a move one time in, in, in West End on Boxing Day. I, I, I remember calling her saying, yeah, we did this, we did that. She said, you're so stupid, don't ever do that. If you're going to do that, don't ever catch me again. And that's weird because for the first time I was like, oh, right, this ain't cool. You know, because parents can tell you don't do it. Fair enough. Your young offenders workers can tell you, don't do it, and you're like, yeah, whatever. But as soon as someone at your peer level tells you something's not cool, hence a girl's or something, that really helps change me. So I did eventually get into my A2s, and well, I went to university. But as I mentioned in my intro, I, didn't, I, did, I did my A2s, but I didn't necessarily pass college. I, didn't, I couldn't pick it back up in time. I couldn't get it back together. I tried my best, but I had to go through the clearing process. And for those of you who are unsure what the clearing process is, this is whereby you literally you get your A-level results, you realise that you failed or did crap, and you're literally on the phones begging universities to let you in, just begging them. You know, I'll, I'll phone maybe Brunel, have you got any space for me? No, Kylie, we're well, sorry. I'll phone flipping, I don't know, Oxbridge, can you let me in? You know, guy can try, right? You know what I'm saying? No, we haven't got space for you. But on, I think it was the 10th of September 2010, so literally like 10 days before university is supposed to start, I got a call from Manchester Metropolitan University allowing me admission to start in 10 days later on September 20th. And then this is what happened three years later after that. Next season has also been awarded the LME Professional Passport. I owe the I'll never forget that, like, honestly, you know, I'm warm now, you know, graduation is like, it's so sick, like, you know what, because I was so popular in my year, so as soon as they read up my name, Kylie did Marley, literally, I know you couldn't see it from the video, but everyone just went nuts, you know what I'm saying, so I was like, what? I, I had to hug him, do you know what I'm saying, I was like, forget the handshake, and I just, obviously, everyone's big, I had to start just, like, dancing, do you know what I'm saying, so, yeah, so, there was a light at the end of the tunnel for me, so I graduated with a very high first class honours degree in psychology. So despite screwing up college, despite being that person in South London, I managed to completely get over here and change my life. I, I became published. That, that's nuts because most people graduate, get whatever grade they have, but yeah, I got published with it. And so now what that means is that people now reference me, like, who am I? <laughs> like, and then I think there's this one academia journal I think it's on, and I get email whenever someone references me, so it's like, wow, like, you know, like, how, how, how are they doing that? It's just, it's just amazing. I then became elected vice president and president, vice president and governor of my university. So in my students' union elections, out of 38,000 people, they voted me to be the vice president and the governor. That was just on a local scale, because on a national scale, I became elected director of the NUS. Anyone heard of the NUS before? Yeah, so National Union of Students. They're, they're an organisation that represents over 7 million students up and down the UK and if there's any UK students abroad. In that time, I also did a bit of travelling. Has so anyone been to America before? Yeah, so here's me in Miami. Um, there's me on the same spot as Martin Luther King in Washington. There's me taking selfies with crocodiles. I was brave, you know, like, I had to do it. And there's me on Beverly Hills. You know, you've got that expensive rodeo drive. I also went down to Australia. You know, taking pictures by the Sydney Harbour Bridge, skydiving. And I was so upset after I finished that, because they said to me, Oh, you know you can actually go skydiving without a parachute? I was like, how? They said, yeah, you can only do it but once. <laughs> also did a bit of surfing <laughs> and taking selfies with kangaroos. <laughs> or Joey, I guess that's a Joey, right? And also it's Turkey. <laughs> yes, I've got a lot of, yes, I'll tell you I'm going to Turkey. And so now I was like, that's I'm a full-time entrepreneur. I've got my events management business, Cheshire Ents. Here's me. You know, any of you guys know this guy here? Daffy from M Dogs? Been on those N-dubs, or this guy here, Charlie Sloth. BBA, you know Charlie Sloth, yeah, so. It's not, he actually, he actually um, texted me, Happy New Year, and I was gassed. I was like, yes, Charlie, yeah. 
And I've also been featured in the paper, so also for my speeches, what you see I'm doing now, my healthy eating, I'm not a vegan now, you know, I wasn't even a vegan at the time, but you know, they liked my healthy eating back then, so now I'm even more healthier. And also for my event organising. And that's big because most of my friends were in the paper with mushrooms. <laughs> and there's me like, I mean, I almost look like a mushroom, yeah, but I'm smiling. Yeah. I'm smiling. You see it, yeah? See the representatives? <laughs> and it's also been over the BBC, as we mentioned in my intro, so the various channels that you see there. And more recent, well, not more recent. It's not even, it's okay, last year, me during the EU referendum, this is where I got known as the smoothest speaker on TV. And yes, yeah, so that's, you can look into that if you want to. And um, more recently, this has come down with me, so I was on come down with me a couple of months ago in January. <laughs> don't watch it, don't watch it. Don't, don't, you know when I said take questions? Don't ask a question, where can I watch it come down with me? Just know that there I am, okay? Someone's tweeted out about Pogba, you know? They don't follow football. Someone's having like, cool Pogba. And they, and they turn into a meme. You want they turn into a meme. Say, there's no come down with me. And yeah, like I said, this is top 10 of the top 100 most powerful young entrepreneurs in the world. Here I am now. So now the question you should be asking yourselves is how? That's the big thing, it's a how. How do you move from where you are over here to whatever man is? Now over here is different for everybody. Mine, I gave you a little bit of my story. The question is, how do you move from where you are here to make that transition to success wherever it's you want to be over here? And again, over here is different for everybody. It might be that full-time job, it might be that business, it might be traveling, whatever. The question you should be asking yourself is now, how do you make the transition from where you are to wherever it is that you want to be? And in the last couple of minutes that we have, I'm going to share with you some tips. Yeah, I see, oh, I saw the fire here. Last five minutes, I'm going to share with you how you can begin to make that transition from where you are right now to where it is that you want to be. Because typically, give me some typical, um, okay, now you guys, are, in fact, this is specifically mostly for the F. <laughs> most of you are already F. Most of you are HQ already, right? Because typically, people have, if they don't go to university, they would find a job, go traveling, start a business, or absolutely F all. <laughs> and then go to university. But anyone who's at university already, I think that you made the best decision. Because you can go to university right now and still do all of those things afterwards. Yeah, you can still do CFA if you, if you want to, you graduate too. A lot of my friends are doing that now. So you can still try, find a job after you. Good, go, I reckon go to university first, a job always gonna be there. You can travel after you need call, start business after you need call. Or, you know, I wouldn't recommend this one, but I guess if you want to, call. Now, the reason I say the best time to go to uni is now because they say that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The, best the second best time to plant a tree is right now. So right now, if you're all of you HEers, I know, I guess there wasn't any FE, but anyone in HE, now's the time, it's a good thing going to university right now. It's the best time. Any other option you can do afterwards. So no matter what stage you're at, whether you're in your first year, second year, whatever, understand this is the best time for you to do university is right now. Anything else can wait. Let's skip this, this again for the F years. Because this is a typical route. Like a butterfly, you have your egg, you got your caterpillar. See, I didn't realize the technical term's not cocoon, it's whatever that says, chrysalis. <laughs> like everyone thinks things is, it goes into egg, caterpillar, cocoon, right? But no, I learned that it's actually a chrysalis. And what that creates, so I say that's nursery, school, college sixth form, University graduation, that's when you become your adult, that's when you finish. So, but most people in HG quit here, just as you're emerging. But you understand that you've made it this far for your university journey, you were, you were the egg, believe me, or not, you were an egg. Then you were a caterpillar, you're coming towards the end of your college of sixth form, you just need to make it to your adult. An adult, but most people quit here. And forget why they started. Because a degree, just because you have a degree, a degree is only one thing. But there's so many other things that come around with it. I mean, you need 90 degrees to at least be a right angle. You get that? But well, one degree isn't enough. So here's some famous people who've also been at university. Some people you should be looking up to. I want to surprise you and say, who was that? But, okay, Danny Howard. Anyone know who this is? You a Mal. He got a degree in the Technical University of Madrid in marketing and sports science. So I don't care how busy you are, he's a professional footballer from Manchester United and Spain and he still managed to get a degree. So what is stopping you from finishing your degree right now too? Anyone know who this is? Not dog. Who? Not dog. Sweet dog. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone into the UK grand scene? Stormzy. Oh, no, it's correct. This is Stormzy friend, correct. He got a degree from Portsmouth University. Again, these are the people who are also getting degrees. Anyone know who this is? Everyone, well, not everyone, but Harry Potter fans should know who this is, right? Who is it? Watson. Watson. She's got a degree from Brown University. <laughs> it makes sense, English literature. 
Again, she did all the Harry Potter, she still got herself a degree. So if you're in your HE right now, what is stopping you from completing yours? Anyone know who this is? Say, say it, shout, you can say it, shout. Jessica. Jessica Ennis Hill. She got a degree from the University of Sheffield in psychology. Yeah, me too. And she's from here, so anyone know who this is? <laughs> like, so, see, if I'm doing this presentation down south, not many people know who she is, I'm like, okay. But who's this, guys? So Vicky Patterson, she's got a degree. Some people are shocked, but she got a degree in drama. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If she's in the crowd, I'm sorry, Vicky, she's not in here, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So these are people who've also got degrees. So if you don't look at my story and think, okay, wow, Kylie got a degree, I gave you six examples of people who also have a degree. Can you hold it up? Oh no. And I gave you six examples of people who also have degrees too. So again, if you're in HG right now and you're thinking about dropping out or whatever, understand that you got this far, keep going. You know, you work at Capital, you need some merch, you need a butterfly. And here's some reasons why I think university, I call it university, so why is it so live? Because remember, university is literally so lying. And I like my acronyms, okay? So if you've got a pen and paper, you can write it down, S-O-L-I-V-E. And I'm going to tell you why university was so live. You know, you have social life. When you're a student, this is one of the few times you're around your peers like this. Because if you're working full time, you're not going to be around like-minded people if you're saying A through. So social life at university is amazing. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Opportunities. There's opportunities everywhere as a student. I like to say that there's an opportunity ball raging about. You know, you know like a ball? No, no, no. You know like a ball? There's a ball raging about. So literally, I would say, you know, don't just grab the ball by the horns. Put him in a headlock and squeeze. Because opportunity, look at the sign, there's opportunities everywhere whilst you're a student. Most of the successes I have right now are because of opportunities I took as a student. So understand that, remember, your degree is only one thing, you need 90 to get to a right angle. Opportunities, these are the things you should be taking up while you're still here. And some of you get worried about opportunities, like, wouldn't you? But I'm being buzzed right now trying to tell you there's opportunities everywhere. Life experiences. Like, the reason I love um, higher education is because higher education means lack of bubble, where they give you life experiences, but you're still protected. So whether that's handling your finances, whether that's renting, or you know, whether that's just making a transition to being an adult. So you have so many opportunities to practice life experiences whilst you're still a student. So make sure you do embrace those too. Independence. Because when I'm saying, when I'm saying that you're in a bubble, you also have independence to a certain degree. You know, just like that's fish, you can now start to do things you want. Like I said, I had my independence and I realized, like, right, I can just, I don't have to be in school nine to three. At university and HE, you're not in classes from nine to five, Monday to Friday. So you have independence before you do start that full time job, whatever you decide to do afterwards. They say variety is the spice of life, and I completely agree with that, particularly at university or HE. Because you've got your classes. Which, oh god, you have your classes, which is cool. You have your friends, which is a nice variety. No two days are the same, so it's not Groundhog Day. Everything is, every day is different for me. I experience that in HE. Everything is different, so it's just having that self awareness to embrace it. You've got sports clubs and societies if you have that here too, so you have a chance to do that. And you have, understand, listen, as a student, understand, you have big holidays than everybody else. Like, you have, you have three months off in the, in the summer. Ask any of your staff what they'll do three months off. They say you have three months off in the summer. You have your Easter break, you have your Christmas break. Understand, like, yo, as a student, what are you, what are you down for? Like, in my second year, I did Camp America. If I did Camp America twice, do you know what I'm saying? So you have the opportunity to have big holidays for you to make the most of it. And finally, you have the chance to have expertise. Now, this is where you can focus and hone in on something that you're very, very passionate about. I remember going through the program, I see some people doing some things about smartphones and how they're not smart or something like that. Is that someone's in here? Okay, is that your one? Yeah, give me a round of applause like that when I call my eye, man. <laughs> no, so you get a chance to hone in. You get a chance to hone in on what it is that you're actually interested in. So, in terms of being university so live, I'll give you the reasons why. <coughs> Oops. And before I do come to my last uh, slide, I know we're at 10, did you hold it up? I didn't even see. Okay. Is, there, is there any questions before we end? Any questions? I know that I'll ask you to jot down any questions that you do have. No question? No? Okay, that said, uh, thank you for your time, you've been a great audience. <laughs> Otto, <Ardo> late. <laughs>
do you want me to stop it? No, no, it's fine. I'm just waiting for the people to come in. I don't. I, I, should we get into jumping jacks? No. <laughs> no. Uh, guys, who's late? Anyone who's late, come up. Anyone who's no. late, make it obvious. Make it known for anyone who was late. Guys, close the front. Anyone else who was late? Who was late? Guys, wait here for a girl. Wait here, girls. Wait here. Wait here. Wait, guys. You late? Come up. Come up. Come up. Come up as well. Listen, bait them up. Listen, be a snitch. Don't like a snitch. Who was late? Who was late? Who was late? Anyone who was late? Yeah, come on then. She had a hat. I said, I said, I said, who was late? She goes, no, she didn't know I was here. Like, she didn't know I was here. Yeah, I respect that. I do respect that, but you're late. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? You know why it's even bad for you guys to be late? That means you missed my presentation, unless you're standing. Okay. You like to have a Come on, come on. See, like I said, you have an early birds, you have a night owls. So, what are these guys? The permanent saucy pigeons. <laughs> Okay, so at the beginning of our presentation, we had a thing whereby anyone who's late has to do a forfeit for being late. Now, simply because as a presenter or people up front, it can be quite disturbing when people do come in late. So what we agreed is that for anyone who is late has to do a forfeit of doing jumping jacks or star jumps. So the first group of people who are late had to do one, and the second, which are you guys, have to do two. So when, when we count down three, two, one, is that okay for you to do two jumping jacks? Not at all. No, are you ready? Count down with me. Three, two, one, one. Okay, thank you very much, Coyote. Uh, for the staff members here, there's a, a new method to increase attendance and punctuality there. You might want to use that.